Hey family, it's Pastor Paul. Hope you're ready for a time in the Word. I want to thank our friend Shay for leading us in worship. During this month of January, we gave our worship team and band um, the month off for them to get a chance to reset and to refocus, to spend some time in rehearsing, in praying together. And so they haven't been here, but our friends have been just incredible in leading us in worship. And for that, we are we're just so, so very grateful. Um, as we wrap up the month of January and get ready to transition into our new series for February, we're going to share a word from our theme passage, our theme verse in Isaiah 43, verse 18 and 19, and speak specifically about how we're going to be navigating and, and making it through this way in the wilderness. And I want to use it as a as a way of kicking off into what we're doing. So God bless you. Thank you for tuning in with us. Of course, as always, we ask you to take the moment to share this with your friends and family and your, your network, as well as be praying as we get ready to, to dive into what we're about to do. So if you would just join me in praying now as I um, just surrender this time to the Lord. Father, we just want to bless you. Thank you for your goodness and your mercy, for your love and your power. God, we thank you that you brought us into this new season and that you have your good purpose to be fulfilled in our lives. And so, Lord, I pray that you would just come and just baptize your word, that God, it would speak into the hearts of your people, that they would experience you in a fresh new way. I pray that you would give insight, that you would break strongholds in our minds and that you would set us free to live for you and to do exactly what you want us to do because, God, we know your intent towards us is always good. And so we thank you for that now. In Jesus' name, amen. In, um, in 1988, in our island home of Jamaica, there was this um, uh, massive hurricane called Gilbert. And they made songs about it because it was one of the, the, the biggest earthquakes that has hit the island for over a century. And um, it devastated the island. There's a point in the, the entire um, experience of it where the international community could not pick up Jamaica on the satellite. It was as if some reporter says, it looks like Jamaica is gone because the, the hurricane literally just swept the, the small island and, um, and we were in the, in the middle of it. It was a, uh, a storm. We lived in an um, uh, average size five bedroom home. It was built in 1972, um, but the winds and the storm came and all of that happened and we were all battened down. We made some you know, preparations for it. Um, nobody expected it to be this um, devastating or get to that level. So I can remember us kind of like hunkering down, hearing the winds howling, um, the trees, you know, even the day before when my dad, he cut the trees down, um, trim got things done. We put um, the, 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 the plywood panels on the windows. I mean, it was crazy. Um, but we made it. There were two other houses close by. So somehow we all buffered the wind together and uh, our roofs were safe. Um, at those days, by the satellite dish, they kind of like, you know, ours got bent over but did not fly like many that we, we heard about. Um, also, I can recall for um, Charmaine at, at her house, her dad had just recently got this house built. Um, I mean, from scratch, it was a dream, you know, design up on the hill, beautiful views. It was, I mean, incredible um, project that was just completed about um, a year and a half before. And so when the winds came and the storm was blowing hard, something um, uh, happened. They were, from their vantage point, able to see literal roofs being ripped off by the hurricane. Um, people were just, it was, it was just crazy. And as they're watching this happen, they have a brand new house and they know that they can handle it. So they were just like praying and just concerned for others. And then there came this moment. They were upstairs, Charmaine tells a story. And um, they started to hear the sound of the cracking in their own roof. It's a brand new structure. And it just started to rip, like just tearing tape off somebody's skin. And as it was ripping and the wind and the rain started coming, I mean, they were scampering grabbing personal things like a picture or two. But in that moment, they didn't have time to do much. And they ran downstairs into a little powder room that was covered. And for the next day, night, and the next day, they literally hunkered down in that room 
and the storm soaked their house, destroyed some very personal, sentimental things that could not be replaced. Um, and it was, it was devastating. Her dad was just heartbroken because like, they spent so much time and effort over the, the years before just getting this beautiful thing ready and um, it hit. And we're gonna talk about the, the reality of storms. The thing about what happened to their roof, they were so shocked about it, is that when they, the insurance adjusters came and evaluated the situation, they realized that um, in Jamaica, for example, the houses are built with what we, is block and steel um, because it's built to withstand heavy winds and hurricane because they come every year. And also the roofing at, uh, have what is called hurricane straps, literally to help to hold the, the roofing in place during a hurricane. And then their house is at, was at a certain elevation and therefore required like double the hurricane straps and much closer together to keep it protected. And when the insurance adjusters came, they realized that the, the contractors or the builders of the, the house uh, cheated on it and did not put the, the double um, hurricane straps that were required for that elevation of house. And so therefore that's what caused it to be, to be ripped. And that the inspectors who inspected the house um, before they passed it um, failed to notice and to pick that up. So therefore, we realized something very true. That the extent of the damage that they had, the extent of the displacement and the, the despair and the, the extent of all that destroyed their, ho their house and knocked them out of their home for a couple of weeks was not only based on the severity and the power of the storm, but it was also based on the measure of unpreparedness for the storm. Now, let me say that one more time. The extent of the damage to their house, the extent of the despair, the extent of the displacement was not only based on the power of the hurricane, the power of the storm hitting them, it was also based on the lack of preparedness for the storm. You see, the contractor cheated and cut corners and did not put in the right straps. So it weakened the house for the storm. The inspector did not notice and did not and signed off on the house and therefore it was not prepared for the likely hurricane. Now the truth is in our lives, my brothers, my sisters, my friends, is that storms do come. Difficulty does happen. The Bible says clearly the words of Christ himself that in this world we will have trouble, but take heart, I've overcome the world. And you and I know that trouble in this world is just real, difficulties, disasters, crisis, problems. But the extent of the damage of the the storms of life, the extent of the damage of the, the hurricane and the difficulties is one based on the power of the difficult or the extent or the extreme nature of it, but also based on how you and I are prepared for it. So we can blame the one person and say, well, they didn't teach me properly or, or train me properly. We can blame the, or account with the partner where they did not check in on me and, and make sure I was in the right space. But at the end of the day, the person who experienced the, the suffering and the displacement and the despair, the one who experiences the disaster is you or me. And so therefore it becomes upon us this responsibility to say, you know what? I've got to check myself. I've got to, for myself, prepare for the eventualities of life in this world. And so we're going to talk about that today because Jesus gave a, a word concerning being prepared for the storms. You see, in Isaiah 43, verse 18 and 19, we're, we're talking about this new thing that God has promised. In verse 18, he says it very clearly. He says, forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Do you not perceive it? And the reality is that we have affirmed over the last few weeks is that number one, when we're able to perceive the will and the purposes of God, we are able to participate with God. And when we are able to perceive what God is up to, we are able to then partake of what God has in store for us. And I want to share with you today that when we're able to perceive what God's purpose and will and what he's about to do, 
then we are able to prepare better for it. I'm going to say it one more time. If we can perceive it, we can participate in it. If we can perceive it, we can partake of it. If we can perceive it, we can definitely get prepared for it. And that storm came, but that house was not prepared for it. I want to help you today that you and I can get prepared for the storm. For some of you like pastors, you have heard this last year because the storm hit, my house was shaken, my life was, was dismantled, I entered into despair. But can I tell you, it's not too late. As we continue in 2021, as we set our course for the future, perceiving the will of God will set you free that you can know how to prepare well for what is about to come. Whether the, the glories of what he has to give you, whether the challenges that are about to come, he sets you up by revealing to you his purpose and his will, and then you and I can prepare, put the, the hurricane straps in place. We can, you know, double check a few things. You know, I remember somebody once said, sometimes we gotta check ourselves before we wreck ourselves. Sometimes our preparation sets us up for the progress God has for us. And therefore, I wanna let today be a day in the act, a couple things that we can do to prepare for what God is about to do. And then for you and I to make it our passion, the hunger, the desperation of our heart, that you and I will be able to perceive what God is about to do. You're like, Pastor, I wish I knew what God is about to do, because if I can perceive it, I can participate in it. Yeah, if I can perceive it, then I can partake of it. If I, if I can perceive it, then I can prepare for it, and therefore perceiving it is crucial. It was just a couple of days ago, I was in, um, at home, I was in praying about uh, direction for this year, and in the middle of the night, um, about 3 a.m. plus, I, I was awoken with this thought and this revelation from God um, coming out of the scriptures I was studying. And as it burst in my heart, I was up then for the next hour and a half as I kind of thought through a lot of things in my life. Because of what he says he's doing, it allowed me then to start to reorder some things in my life to say, you know what, if God is about to do that, I better be in preparation for it. If God is about to do that, I mean, it changed even how I prioritized some hiring decisions that I had to make for our business. To say, you know what, God is about to do this, so therefore, I better prioritize this issue above the other issue so that I can make better decisions. Because, you see, if you and I know, let me talk to that, that business person, if you and I know what God is about to spring up in front of us. Because the Bible says, now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? When you are able to perceive it, then you can start to set priorities in your life and, and the projects that you're working on because you're anticipating what God is about to do. Leadership literally, half of leadership is literally anticipation. Be having a sense of what is to come and preparing your team, your organization, and your business for that. I'm talking to that politician right now that you're, you work in the city and you're, you have many demands. You have six people you know, pushing for one agenda and another for another agenda and everybody's lobbying to put their desire and good plans to be first on the city's list and you have to navigate that and figure it out. But if you're able to perceive what God is about to do, then you can start to set some priorities in place so that you are able then to have the victory and the success God wants for you to fulfill the work in the kingdom. Talking to that mother and that father who you're thinking about your children and what's going to be your plans for this year and navigating schooling and, and school fees and tuitions and all that kind of stuff. And as you're thinking it through, you're like, God, if I had a glimpse of what you're about to do in my child's life, then I'll be able to prepare them for the future. Then I'll be able to start putting some things in place that we can participate with what you're about to do. And so therefore, it is crucial for you and for me to tap into that. And that is my prayer, my desire for you, that you be able to perceive what God is about to do, that you can participate in it, that you can literally partake of the good things he has in store. And also that today you can also prepare for what he is about to do. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Have you gotten that glimpse yet? You know, if you have, I mean, that's something worth shouting about. It's like, yeah, I'm, because I'm telling you, for me, it just kind of set a lot of things free. It was kind of like, whoo! Open some things up and I just kind of had a certain sense of peace, joy, and anticipation. Hey, he's up to do that. So therefore, I'm getting some things in place. Because how many of you know, uh, faith without works is dead. Because I believe that what he has revealed is him. Then I can start putting some things in place based on that. And then he, the Bible says that when we, when we have faith, it pleases God. He smiles. 
because he's a reward of those of us who diligently seek him. So I encourage you today to just to get your heart ready to, to trust him, get your heart ready to perceive what he's about to do so that you and I can be prepared, whether it be for the storms, whether it be for the opportunities, whether it be for the victories, whether it be for the life circumstances that are about to happen. And last, I want to tell you about perceiving God's will. If somebody said to me once, hey, I'm praying about this, and I want to get married this year, and if you're not getting a word about that, he's not revealing that to you, don't get distracted and locked in. The only thing I want to hear from God is about this need I have. If you get too locked in, I'll tell you the truth, you can miss it. Deuteronomy 29, verse 29 says, The secret things belong to God, but those that are revealed belong to us and our children's children. Which means, if God has not revealed something about that issue that you're putting towards Him, then don't stress. Relax. Be at peace. Pray. Seek counsel. Use the wisdom He has given you, because He says He will give you. And then make some decisions that stays in line with His word. You'll be all right. But when he reveals something to you about his plans, purpose, desires, his intentions for you, you jump onto that thing, man, and you prioritize that and everything else will be added to you as well. Matthew 6, 33. Seek first the kingdom and his way of doing things. Boom, boom, boom. Then everything else will be added to you as well. Because when you read the Bible, what I notice is that the text in even all the personal blessings for people in the text, it often relates to the advancement of the kingdom of God and the mission of God in the earth. And so therefore, tap into God's purpose and be a part of what He's doing as He unfolds His plans, His purpose on the earth in which we live. And you and I will be able to have the joy that comes um, with that. So if you have your Bibles, turn with me to Matthew chapter 7. We're going to be reading from verse 24 to 29. It's going to be our launching text to, to tap into the truth of what it means to prepare for what God is about to do. Matthew chapter 7, verse 24 to 29. Jesus is speaking and he says these words, therefore everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, yet it did not fall because it it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish person who built his house on a sand. The rain came, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. And when Jesus had finished speaking these things, the crowds were amazed at his teaching, because he taught as one with authority, not as the teachers of the law. Let's pray again together. Father, we just come to you in the name of Jesus. Thank you for your word to us today. God, I pray, Lord God, that as we navigate this year, as we walk through the journey together, that, Father, you would give us the preparation we need to allow our house to stand against every wind and every rain and every storm. That, God, you would allow our spirits to be prepared deep within our heart. That, Lord God, we will be able, Lord Jesus, to smile at the storm, that we'll be able, Lord Jesus, to stand, that when we have done everything to stand, that even if we're hard pressed on every side, we will not be crushed. Even if we're struck down, we will not be abandoned. That Lord God, by the power that is in us through you, that we will rise and that we will stand and not fall. And so Father, I ask that you would just bless your word onto our hearts today, that God, you'd open our eyes to be able to perceive what you're up to and what you're doing, that we can share in it and participate and be prepared for it. Lord God, bless your word unto our hearts this day. And Jesus, I pray that you would glorify your name in us because, Lord, you are our God. In Jesus' name, amen. So Jesus says clearly, if we have a strong foundation on the rock, we will stand. And I want to say that as we consider what God is about to do, as we're going to navigate this wilderness, as we're going to experience his provision in the wasteland, as we're going to be going through this year, I want us to go prepared. I want us to be able to to know that we are rock solid. You know, sometimes when I, you know, say hello to to my kids, it says, you're solid. And there's a basic saying, you're all right. You got everything in place that you're able to stand. And I'm like, yeah, I'm solid. And so I want you to be solid. I want you to be on the rock so that whatever comes your way in 2021 
you'll be able to stand. And whatever you made it through in this last season, that God will give you the ability to recover, to be strengthened, and that you and I will be able to put in place some things that maybe weren't in place before and just kind of get this thing well. And so this is the words of the Lord to us. He says, hey, the house, as you know, represents our life, the goals, the family. It represents our living. It represents everything that pertains to us in this world and in this life that we live. And the, the house built upon a rock is that kind of um, basalt stone in those days, like a bedrock. It's one, it's one that doesn't shift or shake. And on our, when we rest our house upon that, which is hearing God's word, believing it, and then acting accordingly, that is our rock. Like, what do you mean, Pastor? Well, it's like this. Often we make decisions based on our experience, our reasoning, um, what we're accustomed to, some of our habits and traditions, some of what, how we've been raised. But what God is saying to us here is that the dominance of His Word and having faith in what He says, if it supersedes your experience, if it supersedes your tradition, if it supersedes what you're accustomed to and even your logical reasoning, and you let your faith in what he says supersede those things, he says your life is going to be solid. You're going to be prepared for what he's about to do because what he's about to do is, about, is going to match what he says. You see, God will never go against his own word. And so therefore, if you want to be ready for the new thing he's about to do, if you get solid in the word of God and have faith in it above your other logical or rational way of reasoning, guess what? You're going to win. You're like, but it should be rational. Well, Jesus sometimes gives us um, commands and, and encouragement and instruction that goes against the norm. Sometimes he says, for you to go up, you've got to humble yourself and go down. He says, for you to be successful, instead of lording it over others, that you put yourself as a, a servant, even though you're leading others. Jesus tells us that if when someone tries to offend you, that you get over their offense quickly, that you don't have to repay evil for evil. It may go against and be counter to what we are accustomed to or what seems naturally logical, but if we put faith in his word above our experience, above our own reasoning, guess what, guys? We win. He says that we will be in alignment for when he does what he does in our life, that you and I will be able to share in it, participate. You and I will be able to partake of it and get what he has for us, and you and I will be able to prepare for what he's about to do better. Are you tracking with me? I hope, you, I hope you're capturing that, that. This word from Jesus is not just a nice parable about building your house on the rock and it's, you know, it's like, oh, let's have a Christian background. No, it is speaking about a radical faith that when God says that we believe it. You see, when God says, give the first fruits of our increase to him, you're like, no, 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 that doesn't make sense. I've got to pay this bill, that bill, that bill, that bill first. God is like, hey, if you trust me, and that you would make holy that which I've called holy, my your first fruits, guess what? He's going to bless the 90% and cause it to reach everything you need. Man, pastor, that's backwards. No, it is forward because it allows you to take the words of Jesus, trust it above your other instincts, and then you'll be ready for what God is about to do. Are you, are you tracking with me today? Are you, are you seeing the, the revelation of being prepared for what God is about to do by packing your backpack with a resolve in your soul to take his word and then believe it and according to it? The measure of a, a man's or woman maturity in the kingdom of God is your ability to hear from God, believe what he says, and then do it. Would you do that today? Would you recognize that you don't want to live your house on the sand where you just kind of like have a you know, an appreciation of the word, but not necessarily faith in the word. You know, there are many times I would say, man, that's a good word. That Man, that's a good, I like it. It's encouraging. Um, you're going to do it. Um, I'm, I'm thinking about it, you know, but something happens when you believe what God says. Something happens to you when you say goodbye to one thing to get the best of what he has. I remember as a young person, um, I had to make a resolve that I'm not going to be unequally yoked. I'm going to choose to, to engage in a long-term relational commitment with somebody who has the same values and the Christian faith and the same person that when it comes to making decisions of our future, we are submitted to the same God. Not where we'll set ourselves up to have conflict and problems because one says no for this and one says yes for this and one says no. Can you imagine raising the kids? Well, no, no, they should go to worship. No, 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 I don't think. It creates a, a, an incompatibility. And God's word says, hey, do not be unequally yoked. Marry someone 
not at your prejudice or anything, but you have a bias that says, you know what, I'm gonna be compatible with someone who has the same values as I do, who is submitted to an authority above ourselves so that when we're working our things through, we can choose to submit to him, God, even above our preferences. That we're gonna make our raising our children in a united way, not in a divided way. And therefore he says that, and that's hard. I know young people today, man, they're like, man, that's rough. You know, I have three daughters and a son, and they have to, they're, they're, they have to grapple with those things where they find somebody like amazing. And I mean, it's like, woo! But when I look to the future, if we don't work this thing out, it might create an issue. I know that was something I had to make a choice, and I, and I remember, I met someone who was like really matching many other ways, and they said, no, 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 I'm, gonna, I'm going to like keep trusting God's word above my feelings, my intuition, my own reasoning. And God allowed it for me to, to connect with Charmaine, my wife now of 28 years. We've been together for 35 years. We were like high school sweethearts. And it allowed us to navigate the issues of life and the challenges of life because we had a foundation. Not to say that it couldn't all, you know, like, you know, get all a mess, but it gives an advantage of just trusting God's word. Remember there are times when we came to our own crisis. And it's like, man, and we realized that God doesn't like divorce. And he says, hey, work this thing out. And it, it took a minute, but we had to choose to sacrifice some of our own feelings, our own stuff, right? Our own rights, forgiving over and over and working it out and navigating to be able to make it through those difficult seasons and times and years. Why? Because we have to make a choice to trust his word above ours. So when Jesus says to you, you know, your life becomes solid when you, when you build it on the rock of believing his word, it's not an easy thing. It's not a, a light, mild thing. And what's interesting about this text, verse 24 starts with these words. It says, therefore, Jesus says, everyone who hears these words of mine. And whenever you're in the Bible, I learned this when I was in, um, in Sunday school, it says whenever you start a text in the scripture that starts with therefore, you have to ask yourself the question, what is that therefore, therefore? I mean, it's connecting something he said before to what he's saying now. It's like almost he's saying, based on all that I've said, therefore, one, two, three, four. And so here we go. He goes, therefore, what was he therefore about? Well, just before that, in, in the same chapter seven of Matthew, he speaks to the people and he says that there is a, a wide gate and a narrow gate. And the narrow gate leads to life while the wide gate can lead to destruction. He says many people follow the wide gate, but a few follow the narrow gate and that one leads to life. What is he saying? The word of God, his truth, his principles, faith in what he says narrows the gate. Because the wide gate is like, hey, I can do whatever I want. I can just follow the crowd. I can go... But the narrow gate says, hey, I'm going to narrow the boundaries of the decisions I make to the word of God. Somebody says, man, you're narrow-minded. Well, guess what? If I, if you, all of us are, because, but it's what you narrow your mind on. So all of us have principles and conclusions that, that help to govern the way we think. It is a reason why it's a, you may call it a narrow mind if somebody doesn't drive 100 miles an hour in a 35-mile zone. Why? Because we have narrowed our mind that, hey, in this context 35 is the speed limit and i'm going to manage myself and narrow my range of choices to that see what i'm saying so it's not some weird like oh you're just kind of like too. no if i narrow it to the word of god it will guarantee me the into life you know like, same way with our health and how we treat our bodies and all that stuff we've got to say you know what there are some things that i, I don't eat and some things i do eat right Took me one night in the hospital about eight years ago. And when my heart had went AFib, uh, I mean, it was just not a good day for, for somebody my age. And uh, the, the cardiologist says, well, you know, lifestyle is the medicine. And therefore, there's some things that you can do. You can narrow your choices of what you eat. You can narrow the choice of your activities and your sleep patterns. And that would cause your heart to, to naturally just get better and better. And the treatment I'm putting you on will actually work out faster. I went to a medical seminar and they showed the statistics of somebody who would eat, um, you know, certain things and those who did not over their treatment and how the, the difference was there. Guess what? Right? That day, I had to give up some, some stuff I liked. I mean, those baby back ribs, man. Whoo! I used to salivate for the first couple of years because I'm like, man, 
But guess what? I wanted to live, so I narrowed my choices. So when the Bible says the narrow gate leads to life, it's, it's just facts. Now you have to make a choice. When Warren Buffett, Buffett decides to spend a certain amount of hours every day just in reading and studying and expanding his knowledge and then applying it to what he does, he narrowed his gate and therefore it led to a certain amount of success in what he did in, in business. You and I have to realize that this idea of being like frivolous and doing anything you want would lead just to a certain sense of failure. You've got to focus. Sometimes you have to follow one course until successful. You've got you to be able to narrow that thing. And that's what Jesus says. Therefore, if you narrow your options to what I have spoken in my word and what I've revealed to you, it would lead to life and you'd be ready for what I have in store for you. The next thing he spoke about in that same chapter 7, just after that, he spoke about true and false prophets. He says, don't listen to everybody what they're saying. He says, let their fruits be the affirmation of who they are. He says, listen, by their fruits, you will know them. Many will come in my name saying, ah, this is this and this is that. He says, well, watch their, watch their fruit. Watch your life and their doctrine closely. You know, somebody can advise you many great things, but if they're not able to live it, he says, ah, just be careful. Don't let that person be your disciple or your mentor. Watch it carefully. If you do that, you'll be able to live. And of course, he speaks about right before that, true and false disciples. He says, many will come to me in that day um, saying, Lord, Lord, I, I did this in your name. And he says, ah, depart from me. I do not know you. You work of iniquity. He says, listen, true disciples are the ones who follow him and have a heart and a passion for him. And I'm encouraging you that if you stick to the way Jesus says it, we'll make it. I know for me in my life, when I chose to not trust God's word, and go, you know what, I'm going to do it my way. That, you know, I'd say maybe half or more of the time, it didn't really work out. The other half, God's grace kind of manifested and, and gave me a break. But I can tell you this, whenever I trusted him, whenever I just said, God, is what you said, I'm going to believe it because you said it and follow you, then I was able to partake in everything he had in store for me. That's, I'm telling you, it changed my life. And so I want to encourage you today. Because we've found that God's word is reliable and true. That even as he says it, that you and I will do it. And so therefore, as we, we contemplate that God is about to do something amazing, God is about to, in the, in the challenges and the, the space and the dimensions of our life now, spring forth something powerful. My prayer for you is twofold. That number one, that you would have the eyes of an eagle, where just like the eagles, they are like, you know, 100 feet in the air, and they're flying over the lake. They can actually have this vision that allows them to see the whole lake, the big picture, but yet be able to perceive three feet under the surface of the waters, that salmon. And then because they're able to perceive it, they're able to dive at the right place to get what they need. And that's my prayer for you, that God will allow you to have eyes to see beyond what is just on the surface and to perceive what is about to spring up for you that you and I can participate with him, that you and I can partake in what he has for you, and that you and I can be prepared to take hold of it. How do you prepare? It says it right here. That you and I set ourselves up by making a commitment to the word of God. That we're going to not only read it, study it, but we're going to choose to believe it, to elevate it above every other thought. In one sense, you're going to take captive every thought and make it obedient to the word of Christ. And then live accordingly. Just kind of like, you know what, I'm going to do what he says anyway. And then see what happens. Because you will be able to perceive and literally see what he has in store for you. And then you'll be able to jump right in. This is my heart and my prayer for you that you'll be able to do that. Let me Can I pray for you today? Would you make a couple of choices with me today? that you're going to choose to put as your first priority to seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness, to, to give attention to asking him and seeking him, saying, God, what do you got for me? What are you, what are you about to do? I want to be ready for it. Let's make, that's your daily prayer. And then number two, that you make a choice concerning the, the word of God and how to prepare for it. And I want to challenge you for the, next, um, for the next week, right? Let's do this together for the next six days. That you would choose to set aside some time to read the word of God and choose to say, you know what, I'm, I believe this and I'm going, to, I'm going to live according to this. And that you would post that on, your, on our, our Facebook thing and say, hey, this is what I believe, I'm believing God and what he said in his word. And I'm going to do the same. And I'm going to outline to you six principles that, um, that has, you know, God has been burning in my soul 
from his word to enc encourage and to strengthen you. And let's just do that together. Why not? Let's just say, you know, I'm going to set aside a, a, a sometime every day and just get into the word. And then I'm going to actually declare what the word says. And then to say, hey, I believe it and I'm going to trust God for it. And then let's let that be our community product to pray through and believe and agree together concerning the word of God. When you do that, I'm going to have a, a special uh, treat for you. We are stepping into this season of how we navigate these waters, how we, we you know, recognize that God hasn't designed us to be, to be broken down, but instead allow us to thrive through difficult times. And as we enter into that um, series, we have a book that we want to make available to you free. It's called Unshakable um, by Nelson Searcy. I wrote a forward for, for our community. So, you know, you can just sign on to our connection card and then I will send you the link and you can get it in the Kindle version. You can get it in a PDF or um, the iBook version, whatever works for you. You can just pick that, that way, download it so you can get to read it. But here's also the, the, the big win. If you would do these six days with me, right? And when you do, I would actually send you a hard copy of that book in the mail and say, hey, read this with me. Covers like about uh, 13 challenges or problems people face that we have learned and discovered from or connection cards where people ask for prayer requests and applying God's word to that so that you can learn God's way to navigate this season and this wilderness. And so I want to be able to, to say, hey, make it fun and allow us to do this together that we can trust God's word and watch how God helps to navigate our lives. And what I like about that, um, that, that book is that you can always use the different topics um, as a reference point when, when it's relevant to you. You know, whether it be um, on marriage issues or career issues or sense of purpose or doubt or fear or death or illness. And starting the first week in February, we're going to be teaching through some of these challenges, some of these problems that we and can navigate it with the word of God. God, has, God wants you and I to thrive even in the middle of it. And that's what we're praying and hoping um, for you. So if you would, um, just follow the the information on the screen, text to connect. And when you get on that connection card, say, hey, pastor, I'm in. I'm going to do the challenge with you for the next six days, um, Monday all the way through to Saturday. And um, send my free book to me and give me your address. And we'll mail that book over to you that you can be part of it. And the last part of this I want to tell you is this. We're going to be having our life groups or what we call our online small groups to actually study through the next two months that, um, that teaching and the teachings that we're going to be doing and the book, and I want you to be a part of it as well. And so please, on the connection link that you do, just indicate saying, hey, I want to be a part of a group. Because one advantage we had when we were going through the Gilbert Storm in, in 1988 is that our house was between a number of other houses side by side. And because we were in that cluster together, then the wind could was like interrupted and therefore we were protected because we're in that cluster. Unlike the house that was up on the side of that beautiful hill, it was fully exposed on every side because there wasn't any beside. And maybe you're, you feel that way, that you're aloof and you have this beautiful space and you're just like, da -da. but when you're alone, it's difficult to go through the storms and navigate it. You need your buddies with you. And what we want to provide for you is that small group that you can do it. There will be people from our community here and people from around the world who are able to join a group. So wherever you are, you just follow that link and then you sign up and say, I want to be in. And they'll connect you with a group that matches the time that you are and allow you to share and navigate this season together. So bless your heart and mind. Let me pray for you now. Father, in the name of Jesus, let us pray, God, for your people. Pray for every person watching this day that, God, you would bless them indeed. That, Lord, you allow your word to be a foundation for us, to give us strength beyond ourselves, to give us wisdom to perceive your will and your work in. That even as Jesus was able to perceive your will on earth, that we'll be able to perceive your will in our life as well. And that, God, we will be able to partake and participate with your mission and unfolding of your plan in our lives. So, God, I commit every person to you. And we commit ourselves to your word. Thank you, God, that you're able to do more than we ask or imagine according to the power that works within us. Thank you, Lord, for giving us your word that we are not alone. And we bless you now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. 
Thank you so much for joining um, me today. I trust that God has uh, enriched your life and spoken a word that could set you in this season in the right direction. If you think it's gonna be relevant for someone you know, if you would just share it with them and be a blessing to them. Not for my sake, but for their sake, that, it, that this word would be able to change their life forever. If you need to receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life and give your heart to Him to, to start a relationship with Him, I wanna help you. If you could as well, call the, the prayer line on the screen for an immediate response or just click in and fill out the connection card on our webpage and you'll be able to be followed up this week by one of our pastors or leaders who'd love to be able to encourage you, strengthen you as you make a decision to be a disciple of Jesus Christ, to be a follower and a learner of the Lord um, in the season in which you live. And so God bless you. This is Pastor Paul. Thank you for joining us here at Life Church, And I look forward to seeing you next weekend as we dive into this series of how we're going to thrive through difficult times and for you to join a small group with me. So God bless. I'll see you soon. Thank you.